The appearance of the Buddha in the world is as rare as the Udambara flower. Meeting a Buddha and having faith in him is also extremely difficult and rare. But providing the final offering of alms, just as this Buddha is facing nirvana, and thereby accomplishing the perfection of the practice of charity, is even more difficult and rare. Now, do not lament or grieve. Rather, you should be dancing with joy, rejoicing in your blessings to have been able to encounter this opportunity to present the final offering to a Tathagata and therein complete the perfection of charity. You should not be asking the Buddha to remain any longer in the world. Instead, you should contemplate the fact that everything in the realm where a Buddha operates is impermanent, and that the characteristics of the nature of all conditioned phenomena are just like this as well. In every world, what is born returns to death. Individual lifetimes, though uncountable in number, must inevitably face their exhaustion. Whatever flourishes will inevitably weaken. Any assembly has its dispersal. The prime of life stops before long. The beautiful flush of youth will be corrupted by illness. Life is swallowed by death. For there is no phenomenon that is permanent. Kings may reign as they please, with power unmatched, but everything undergoes change. A lifetime is also like this, a wheel of suffering, limitless, in its transmigration with nary a rest. In the triple world, all is impermanent. The original nature and characteristics of these paths of existence are empty throughout. All these perishable dharmas flowing in and out, eternally saddled with grief. The harmful errors of fear, the anxiety of aging, illness, death, and debilitation, these have no limit. Health is easily broken. Hearts are invaded by resentment. Wrapped in defilements, living beings are like silkworms inside their cocoons. What person of wisdom would find pleasure in such a state? This body, where pain and suffering is collected, where everything is impure, confined, subject to ulcers and more, is fundamentally without value. Even up through the bodies of those in the highest heavens, it is exactly the same. All desire is impermanent. So to the self one does not cling. Freed of desire, with proper thinking, one thus realizes truth. Having completely cut all ties to the great flow of existence, today will be my pari nirvana. When I crossed over to the other shore of existence, I went beyond all forms of suffering. For this reason, it is now that I graciously accept the wondrous bliss of nirvana. By means of this causality, I realize what is beyond all frivolous discourse, and cut off the binds of illusion forever. Today I enter nirvana. There is no aging, illness, or death for me, for my lifespan cannot be exhausted. I now enter nirvana, like the burning out of a great flame. You should not speculate on the meaning of the Tathagata's pari nirvana. Contemplate the Tathagata's abiding presence, like Mount Sumeru. I now enter nirvana, according to the highest bliss. Thus is the nature of Buddhas. You should weep no longer. You should not try to make the Tathagata stay in the world forever and so prevent his pari nirvana, acting like a person so hungry he or she has nothing even to vomit. Instead, you should be contemplating the nature and characteristics of all conditioned phenomena. Contemplate conditioned phenomena in this way, and you will come to have a samadhi of emptiness. If you are seeking the true dharma, you should apply yourself in this way. You must consider the fact that this body is like a banana tree, a mirage in hot weather, a water bubble, a hallucination, an imaginary construct, 
an illusory city floating in the air conjured up by Gandharvas, an unfired pot, or a flash of lightning. It is like drawing something on water, a prisoner facing death, ripe fruit, or cut meat, like the warp thread running out on a loom, like the up-and-down motion when grinding in a mortar as well. You should ponder the fact that all compounded things are like so much poisoned food, that there is much misery in condition phenomena. You should not say things like, take pity on us and remain in the world longer. I have pity for you, indeed, for everyone. That is precisely why I am now about to enter nirvana. What is this? This is the nature of Buddhas, just as it is for created phenomena as well. This is why the Buddhas utter the verse, all created things have natures impermanent. After coming into existence, they do not abide. Tranquil extinction is bliss. 